Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. Today we are in my kitchen because I'm gonna do something different. This is not resin related, but this is a little hobby that I found actually on Facebook and I got into and now I'm kind of obsessed with it. And these are freshies. Um, they're basically scented aroma beads. Um, you scent them yourself. I'm gonna show you how to do everything from start to finish. As I said, I'm in my kitchen. You might hear some dogs barking and you might hear some other crazy stuff outside. But anyways, so I'm gonna show you how to make these. I'm gonna show you where to get everything. And I do sell mine in my shop. These are just a few that I have made. The scent lasts anywhere between three to eight weeks, um, depending on the scent, how big the freshie is. My husband had his in his car for over six weeks now. Okay, so let's get into the first thing. Aroma beads. This is what you're going to use to make your freshies. And then you want to get your scents. Um, I do not use anything off of Amazon. I did one time I got some fragrance oil off of Amazon and it did not soak into my beads. I'm using three companies right now. Um, Crimson, Aztec, and Buy It, Ship It. And for my molds, I use Texas Darling. Actually, inside of the description box I will leave links to all of this so it'll be easy for you to find so everything needs to be measured out um, I use right now a four to one ratio so four ounces of beads to one ounce of liquid everything like I said needs to be weighed out you want to use mason jars of course I don't have my mason jar ready um, we eat spaghetti one night a week so I like to save my spaghetti jars I put them in the dishwasher and it actually takes it cleans them very well even when I'm using jars for different scents um, it works very well the first thing I do is put a label so I do not forget because I tend to forget everything and I want to put the date is 614 and I'm doing watermelon Lemonade, only I could read that probably. <laughs> um, I've noticed like when making freshies, what <laughs> scents I like and what I don't and learn that everybody is different. Um, I really like sweet smells like watermelon lemonade and uh, pink coconut calypso. Those are some of my favorites, fruity pebbles. And I do not like the floral scents um, like hibiscus paradise, but everybody loves that scent. So you have to, you know, get a few of everything, not just what you would like. Um, but the ones that I don't like give me a headache, so. But they're my best sellers. So anyways. Also, I wanted to say as I'm editing the video and seeing everything that's going on, don't be like me and go and buy like 25 molds and 25 cents. And then you just have so much stuff. Just start with like five cents and five molds. See how it goes from there because I overdo everything and now I have so much stuff. That can definitely be a bit overwhelming. We are going to get our mason jar ready. We're gonna get a scale out. Okay guys, so I had to move the camera up a bit. But if you put your jar on the scale and you turn it on, it'll already basically tear out. So it's at zero, can you see it? So if you take it off, 11.9. So I'm gonna put it back on. I'm gonna take my beads. And I wanna get four ounces in there. That's 4.3. Take a little out. 4.1, that's fine. 
everyone does this different. Um, you're gonna find your sweet spot. I live in a um, very hot in the Florida Keys, humid area. My beads dry like in three days. Um, if they don't start drying in three days, I will put one more ounce of beads in and shake it up and that usually does a trick. You can also set your jar in the sun. Don't forget it out there all day. I kind of set mine in the windowsill because they will melt. Or you can set it on the dryer and that dries it out faster. There are some scents like um, leather. I've been told, I've heard, I've saw it on Facebook that take forever to dry, like seven days, 14 days. So I don't even, I haven't even tried that yet. <laughs> um, also, so also there's different type of types of beads. I'm pretty sure um, I get mine from buy it, ship it, that these are called blood cell, blood cell beads. Um, there's round beads. Um, I to some people it matters which bead they get. To me, it really doesn't matter. I've been using these blood cells and they're completely fine. So next I'm going to put my little cup on the scale. This is a one ounce cup, but I'm still gonna do it by weight. And it's zeroed out. And then I'm just gonna add one ounce. Since it's liquid, sometimes it helps if you take it off and set it back down. See, it's at nine. A little more. You can hear it beeping when it sets. That should do it. All right, a tiny bit more. It's like that in between, probably like nine and a half. There it is, one. All right, so I'm gonna move this. Be careful not to spill it. I'm going to pour it into my jar of beads. Just tapping it out. Just tapping it out. And then you're gonna put, you wanna put the lid on really tight and you wanna shake it. I shake it really well um, for the first time. And then I have all my jars set up in my living room. Yes, my husband is like freaking out. I have stuff everywhere. But um, I put them where I can see them. And then like every time I come into the room, I shake them again. So basically a lot of shaking. So this is what it looks like when they're wet. When they're dry, they will look like this. They will no longer stick to the sides and you can see that they're just a solid color. So they are just a solid color. Um, some people after they dry, they like to keep them in the jar, uh, into the jar for another 10 days before they use them. They call it curing them. Um, I, I really don't do that. I use them when they're done and I haven't had a problem um, so that's up to your discretion. Mine still lasts a very long time. Everybody's different. Um, sometimes I don't need to use them and it does end up sitting in the jar for seven days anyways. So that's how you're going to make your beads, your aroma beads. And now I'm gonna show you how to put them in the mold and then we're gonna color them. And I'm gonna show you two different ways um, to do that. This is one I have cooling right now. So let me get my mold stuff set up and I'll be right back. Okay, now to the fun part, the molds. So there's all kinds of different ways you can do this. You can put a solid color mica down. This is navy blue. Um, and then use paint markers, oil-based, to color it in. Um, you can do the micas in the background and then Mod Podge glitter on the top when it's done. That's what I did with these two. And I even added some seashells and a little starfish. Or you can brush them in. Um, these are chameleon chromes. And it picks them right up. Um, cleaning my molds. I get a baby toothbrush, really soft. And I put them in warm water and dish soap and I just scrub them and it comes right out and then rinse. Oop, got a little water in there. Um, the bags that these are in, these are scent proof bags. 
Holly something. Post the link um, where I get them in the description box. I believe they're six and a half by six and a half and I make my own labels with the warning sign. Um, when you have them in a car, if it's like 100 degrees hot outside, Florida, Texas heat, you wanna move them to um, your blinker. If you're gonna be direct, parked in the direct sunlight for a long time, um, that's a little disclaimer there. Or they can melt. I haven't had one melt yet. Me and my husband constantly forget to move it and they haven't melted yet, but just so, you know. And I put like a little barcode to take you to my Etsy store to shop for the freshies, that's kind of neat. And then the scent. So there's also beads. Um, your bead collection can get pretty extensive. I have like a whole bag of just beads. I get a lot of those on Amazon. I'll leave the link for those. So let's get into the molds. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. And I'm going to use mahogany teakwood and I'm going to use black cherry. Black cherry is like becoming one of my favorite ones. Um, my six um, best-selling scents are Love Spell, Pink Coconut Calypso, Watermelon Lemonade, Hibiscus Paradise, Black Cherry, and Caribbean Escape. So, there is, this is, um, these are from Island Micahs and More, my company, .com, islandmicahsandmore.com. This is Mango Mama, and this is Black Oxide, which is a matte black. It's super black. So we're gonna do this one first. This is the first way you can do it, is just putting the color of mica in and painting it later. I'm going to use black cherry for this one. Um, what you wanna do is fill your mold first. Pat it down. I fill it pretty much to the top. I like a thick freshie, it's your, your preference, but the bigger, the thicker, the better your car is gonna smell. You can also hang these in small rooms, bathrooms, closets. And then I get a Ziploc bag. What I should be doing is writing down how much that took, like in a, lo a little measured cup or something maybe. Like this cup has measurements and then I would know for next time, but you know, I like to make everything difficult for myself, so. I just slide it in the bag like this. They will go everywhere and be careful for your pets. You don't want your pets getting this, children or pets. It can be toxic. I mean, it's fragrance and beads, not good if they get them. And now I wanna color them. I'm gonna use black oxide, which is a type of mica, it's matte. A very, very little bit goes a long way, especially with the matte. That's why I love these little spoons. Always use less, and if you can add more, you can, but you can never take away. And what happens is if you put too much, they're not gonna bake correctly. So I just put a little bit in, I seal it, and I just shake it around. Shake and bake. And I can already see that it's going to need just a little bit more. I love these containers with the spoons. It's like perfect. Um, to save on waste and money, I rinse out these plastic bags and then just dry them out with a paper towel or let them hang upside down and reuse them over again. A 
Okay, so once I feel like I've gotten them all covered, um, I'll get my pan out because I like to pour them in the pan. I have a dedicated freshy pan um, because, you know, some fall out, they melt. Um, so I keep it separate. I like to put it in first before they, I pour them in in case any spill out. And we're just gonna pour it in there. Hopefully my hand's not in the way. Pat them down. I can get about three on here at a time because you want to space them out. You don't want them to be too close together. But just working them with them, I found out that I could do three. Pat them down. And then I'm going to move this out of the way and work on my turtle. All right. So this we're going to do a little different. Um, so my background, if you know me and my experience is working with resin and working with mica. I sell mica. I have a mica company. And when I started making these brushes and getting into the groups, I realized that a lot of people didn't know that you can actually brush and um the the pigments you know like chrome or chameleons you could brush them in and it'll pick them up so that was awesome that i was able to do that so this is dragonfly it's a chameleon chrome it's going to shift from purple to green and this is grasshopper it's like a green it kind of shifts to green gold So I'm just gonna brush in, and this is a very soft brush. I also sell these brushes in my shop. You can go up the sides if you want to. Um, I do a lot of holographic ones. Let's see if I have one. Um, vivid hollows, I have these in my shop, and sometimes I like to brush up the sides so that you can see the holographic everywhere. I didn't do it on that one, of course. So anyways, I'm just brushing in. around these are different molds um, than resin molds these are about one inch thick and you can bake them you know they have a high temperature like I said my favorite um, mold place right now is Texas Darling Boutique awesome customer service tons of molds so once I got the green in there, I'm gonna switch to the dragonfly and I'm just gonna do the complete turtle shell and later we'll come back and put some white to break up the little shell, the little lines on the shell. So anyways, I was saying a lot of people didn't know that you can brush on the pigments and I think it's cool that I can show them that. I'm sure some of the old school freshy makers know, but some of the newbies didn't and I actually didn't either until I tested it out. These freshies I guess have been around for a while. It's weird that I just ran into them. I think I kind of like needed a little break from resin. And I have to have hobbies. I've been blinging stuff, um, cups and pens, and then making freshies. <laughs> a lot of freshies, but they're selling well. I sell them um, around town for $15 a piece. And then on my Etsy store, I have them for $20 and that includes shipping. And I will post the link to my Etsy store in case anybody wants to purchase any of these. So the next thing is the nail. Also, people use cookie cutters, metal cookie cutters. Um, I haven't done that yet because I like molds, you know, with my background, but you can use metal 
cookie cutters and you can see other tutorials for that. People usually put their nail in first and I don't like to do that. Um, I just, you know, I like to be difficult, like I said, but you can, after this is dry, I heat up the nail with my torch and just kind of push it through. So this one is gonna be black cherry. I have it all brushed in. See that shift? It's beautiful. And I'm gonna do just like I did with the other. I don't even know if a nail will stick in these, stay in these molds. I can try it. Maybe it'll be easier for me. I mean, the beads basically hold it up. So you wanna just push the beads with something to make sure you get into all of those corners. Again, this was black cherry in case I didn't say that. <laughs> I haven't made a tutorial in so long, I feel awkward. And now I'm reaching out to a whole different crowd of people that are, some are not even in the resin world. But I'm telling you, this is so much fun. Like I love doing it. I put them in the middle and then I spread them to where I need them. This one, the background I'm gonna use is Mangro Mama. A nice green, it's shifty. Another color I love to use on these is rose gold. This is the back of the flamingo and it's rose gold, rosy gold, sorry. And you see how it kind of shifts? That's another favorite color I like to use. When I saw this craft, this hobby, and I saw that you can use mica and knowing I have every single mica color in my shop, I was like, yes. If you don't fill in the corners um, very well, you can get like a wonky little fin or a wonky tail or a wonky whatever it is. I did that with that Michael Myers. Um, I didn't fill in the knife very well and it didn't take the correct shape. His hand didn't take the correct shape. But I'll show you how to press it down and fix that. So I got enough in there. And I'm gonna get my Ziploc. A different Ziploc because I don't have time right now. I see my little mat has a bunch of lint on it. I rolled the heck out of this and it's not coming off. So excuse my lint. I'm liking actually doing this in the kitchen. Um, as I've said in my other art other tutorials I'm having another art studio built this is gonna be my last one it's like the length of the house on the front porch but it's being turned into a room with a proper ventilation system and tables and room because I keep expanding now I sell glitter so it's just crazy I keep outgrowing myself but this is this will be the last time I need like a <laughs> a professional organizer to come help me I was joking me and a friend were joking about that All right, so got it in the bag. This is Mangrove Mama, one of my favorite colors. And I'm just gonna put a scoop for now. Close it up. Shake. Remember, less is more. But I do need a little more. <laughs> One sec. I'm 
Remember, there's so many different ways to do this. You just have to find what you like and what works for you. Okay, so it's done. It's a pretty little green that kind of shifts to a yellowish gold. I'm gonna try the nail just for the sake of the video. I don't think I have the right nail and I don't think it's gonna stay. But let's get our... Pan, move this one over a little bit. This is like a broiling sheet. I'm gonna put this one here because we want space between it. And I'm gonna do a little bit something different this time. I'm gonna get this cup because I'm trying to use a nail. Mica dust is flying everywhere. I'm gonna pour these in the cup first. That way um, I have more control when I pour them. Okay, so I'm going to set the nail here and kind of pour around it. That's about where I put the nail on the turtle, where I put the hole. Hopefully it works. These little beads hold it up. Ah, it might, it just might work. You hear that machine out there? It's hurricane season and my husband started up the generator. You know, he's just testing it, making sure that it works well. I don't know what you got to do, run it. That's man stuff. And we're in the Florida Keys, so. Sorry, dogs were barking. So like I was saying, we, were in, we are in the Florida Keys and we don't mess around with hurricanes. The last hurricane we had, I don't know, five years ago, four, was Hurricane Irma and we're still fixing our house from that hurricane. The eye went right over our house. So I'm just getting all of these in, patting it down, making sure that I get them into the corners. My nail is sticking up, man. I might just have to do this. Um, sometimes I overfill the bag it happens. And I have a Ziploc bag with just different freshy mix-up scent in there. Scents in there in different colors. And one day I will use that. It'll be pretty cool. Like, so if I have any leftovers, which I have a lot. I don't know how I did that. Because I don't measure like I'm supposed to. So I just pour it in the bag with other extras. Okay, now we're gonna talk about ovens. I have a double oven, which has the big oven on the top and then the little oven on the bottom for baking pies and stuff like the oven on the top. I do have a little, um, you know, the electric oven because I used to make, or I still do make sublimation cups, but I don't wanna use that because it gets so hot and these are very like finicky. My sweet spot is 300, degrees for 20 minutes if I'm making one freshie or if I'm making three freshies it always works for me 300 for 20 minutes so I'm gonna set the bake 300 we're gonna wait for it to pre -eat. all right so the oven is ready it's at 300 um I wanted to show you my bag of randoms I was telling you about. I just mixed in the green. And this is my stove. It's a hot mess. This is the bottom. And this is the top that I was telling you about. And I'm just going to carefully set it in. See how it goes with my first time using the mail, the nail. <laughs> and then I'm gonna set my timer to 20 minutes. Oops. Okay, while we're waiting for that 20 minutes, I'm going to put together this one freshie that is a custom order. Um, one of the tips I will give you is a freshie is like resin in the oven. Do not touch it to see if it's ready. If you touch it, it's gonna stick to your finger or stick to whatever you're touching with and pull up 
It's like in a stick and the beads are going to pull off. Um, number two is do not take them out of the mold or the cookie cutter until they're completely cool or else they can break, they can bend. Um, this is my, <laughs> my bin of junk. These are the oil markers. Um, these three come as a set on Amazon. They last forever. And my numerous bead collection I have going on here. Um, there's also fringe that you could put on the bottom. There's all kinds of stuff. So this is like so this one, I did not put the nail in the center. Um, this scent is, I believe, this scent is Caribbean Escape. Um, I already picked out the beads I want to use for this. And the next one that I have, I have another one just like this. This is, so I didn't put the nail in and I'm going to show you how I do it like this. This is probably a stupid way to do it. You can hurt yourself. It's probably easier the other way, but I get my torch that I use for resin, or you can use a lighter. And I just heat up the tip all the way to where I know it's going to go through. And then I just put it where I want it. And it melts right through. Just like that. So you have to let it sit for a minute and cool off. Because if you pull it right through, it's going to pull some of the bead. See how it's melted on the edge? And then you're not going to have a perfect hole. You're going to have to keep going through it. So I'm going to set this here for a second. Find my scissors. I'm going to cut a piece of string. Um, I kind of like eyeball it. You don't want it too long because then the freshie is so heavy. It, it hangs so low into the window. I mean, but people can adjust it how they want it. For this color, I used, um, for this color, I used Shimmering Pearl from my shop. And then I just added a little of um, Island Shimmer. This is an additive, a mica additive. And it looks like diamonds. You just need a tiny, tiny bit. And this one ounce container will last you forever. Can you see it flying around? So I'm not doing anything else to this. This is just staying one color. I'm gonna pull the nail through. And I waited and I did it correctly. And I don't know if you can see, but you can see the hole directly through and that's what you want. And then I'm gonna put this through. And then I'm gonna put my beads on. I got these on Amazon. Like I said, the links to everything is going to be in the description box. Like right under the picture of the video, there is a little arrow. You pull that down and that's where the um, description box is. I like to put the bigger beads on the bottom because The bigger holes on the bottom because after you tie it in the bag sometimes the top beads likes but likes to fall out i think the whiter one has the less the smaller hole speaking gibberish as usual and you can get super creative i have watermelon beads um i'm trying to get some horror ones with like blood splatter on i'm horror obsessed everything horror And then you just take the top. This is this is my the hardest part for me. <laughs> but you twist it just like into a little knot. But I have like tiny little fingers and it's a pain in the butt. So I turned off the video so you didn't have to painfully watch me twist that a hundred times. But you say, hey, this looks really small. But actually when it's hanging in a car, this stretches out really far. Um, so I'm going to take this outside and do a little video to show you what it looks like. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to take these out. I'm going to show you what they look like and how you know they're finished. And then we'll decorate them when they cool.
Okay, back again. I have about nine minutes on the stove. So I just want to show you how I bag them. Um, these are the correct bags, scent proof. If you use other bags, um, some people do use holographic bags and they, they're fine. They say they're fine, but I'm just going with what I think is best. And I think it looks nice in the clear bag because you can see through it. Um, but other bags suck the smell supposedly out of it. So anyways, I made these labels with my Rolo printer. Um, I put this one on the top here. And then I throw this one on the back. And then I write the name in. I have terrible handwriting. Caribbean Escape. Um, these are some stickers I made that I put when I'm shipping on the the bubble mailer. Those are really cute. Sent with love. And then I just, I make sure that the opening's in the back. Because I want the front of my freshies here. Freshie here. I turn it around. And I slide the bead in first. The bags are pretty cheap. You get like 100 of them for $15. So you, and then you just open and you seal the deal. There you go. And they hang. So I think this is super pretty. So I will be back in seven minutes. All right, so I'm taking these out of the oven now. Um, you can tell when they're done because they kind of look glossy and you can see that they're stuck together. Um, I like to take a spoon now and pat it down just a little bit if you use your finger which I had before I mean it's not really that hot but it kind of makes it it takes the shine away from it so I like using a spoon and you know they're done because it's not sticking to the spoon like I said it earlier if you touch this and it's not done it's gonna stick and pull up and then you can't push it back down so it's gonna look a mess and also by pushing it down you're picking up the little details in the mold making sure that the freshie picks it up, basically, or picks up the pigment if you brushed pigment into it. So just a quick pat down, and then my turtle. It's not transferring any color, nothing sticks. For the little arms, I could use a spoon. I'm kind of pushing the sides down. The sides make this little, I'll show you later, like they stick up. Some people cut them off, I leave them, or if you press them down now, they won't be there. But there's like little spikes on the edge where the beads are sticking up. Now I'm gonna take them out of the pan because I don't, I want them to cool off faster, the pan's hot. So put a, a mitt on when you do this, but I'm good with it. I'm just pulling them out and setting them on the mat. They are hot, but they're not burning me. I'm used to really hot stuff. And then we're gonna let these completely dry. I mean to where they are, there's no heat at all. It's completely cool. I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna let them completely cool and then we will come back, we'll decorate them. We'll see how that nail did with my little experiment and we'll be done. <laughs> see you soon, bye. Okay, so these are cooled off and they're ready to be demolded. Um, I wanted to show you the Vivid Hollows before I start. Um, I, I have these in my shop. I have over 10 different colors, rose, gold, periwinkle, co toasted coconut, silver, gold, black onyx um, and they come in a little jar they're I think $4.99 and you get the jar full and you just brush them in and I'm telling you these last forever you can even if you're doing resin take a little sprinkle into the resin it'll be super blingy you can use these on cups super holographic very very fine dust okay let's demold these babies There's my ghost face. And here.
here is my turtle. Let me get the nail out. I'm just gonna press it on here so I don't scratch my already scratched stove. It worked perfect. So I think it's easier to use the nail. I don't have to come back later. It's already there, it pulls right out. So there's many ways that you can paint these. You can use acrylic paint, which I'm going to use for the turtle to get into the little parts that are so thin. I put white acrylic paint in a needle nose bottle. Um, my paint markers, they are, these are oil based. My, these are my favorite. This is my favorite thing to, this is my favorite thing to use unless it's really small. The biggest concern is that you paint something on there, you know, acrylic paint, a marker, and then it rubs off on the bag if you have to ship it or if it's been in there for a long time. I haven't had the problem yet, but I let them dry for 24 hours before I put them in the bag and I put them in this, like a to-go container. I have these to-go containers from the restaurant by my house that we go to and that's my doggy bag. The container actually works awesome. So I'm just filling in and I can wipe off the excess I got on the top when I'm done. So I'm just filling that in with white. I've used gold before. Gold looks pretty nice on this turtle. I got the turtle and the ghost face from Texas Darling. And I got a couple molds from Crimson Candle Supply too. They have some nice molds. And then I got a hammerhead shark mold. I can't remember where I got it from, but um, that company, also a small company, has tons of molds and I will put the links to all these places in the description box. So I have my turtle filled in and then I could just take a, I'm making sure I always miss a little space. And then I could take a wet paper towel, just a little bit wet, not drenched and kind of wipe the top for the spaces. So I got my little guy all cleaned up and for this one, it's fairly simple. We're just gonna use white. That is the blackest black, love it. So you wanna shake your, um, the oil-based Sharpie. These are kind of expensive. It was like $37 for this set, but I'm telling you, it's well worth it. And you just wanna color it in. I go along the edges and then kind of go into the grooves. When I was making these, I said one of them was gonna be mahogany teak wood and I actually did both of them black cherry. It's like so hard for me um, to talk and try to film and think at the same time. My daughter put this post on YouTube, I mean on Facebook today, and it was so funny. It was like totally me. You ever feel like your mouth is stupid, but your mind is smart, like you're intelligent, but you can't express it when you're speaking? That is me, man. I know what I want to say, but it comes out wrong. It comes out all wrong. So I have to go back and edit things. Um, like I said, my oven, the top, I said it backwards. The top is small and the bottom is big, but I like said it backwards. I'm rambling. You can fast forward. Um, if you don't want to sit through this coloring process, but I basically do one coat and then I wait a few minutes and I do another coat. 
Okay, so I did the second coat off camera. My husband's mowing the lawn and it's starting to get really loud under the, the, the um, under the window here. But anyways, they're done. And I'll make the hole later for that when it dries. So when I bake the freshies, I put different scents, scents <laughs> all together in the oven. That's fine, but when I see, when I seal them um, to dry for the next day, I try to keep different um, bins for different scents. Since these are the same, I'm gonna put them together and I just put the lid on and I let this dry till tomorrow, the paint, like tomorrow afternoon and I have not had a problem yet with anything getting transferred on my bag. Um, if you do have that problem, I read that you can uh, you can put parchment paper in between them and the bag. And before I go, I just wanna say to my resin followers that I'm working on some stuff. I'm gonna get it out there. I'm sorry that I've been gone so long. I'm gonna do a turtle tray and I'm gonna do some resin um, UV pens. You know, I'm trying new things. So um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments. I'll answer the best I can when I can. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find out for you. And please hit the like and the subscribe button. And thank you for watching. See you next time.